This is the SF Productions Podcast Network. Good evening and welcome to another exciting episode of Vast Wasteland. Denver, Karen Valentine, Walt, the cast of Soap, Henry Winkler, Mr. Ed and Wilbur, Marty J. Wiley, Mark Smithbauer, and in the center square, Wilbur Neal. All on the new... Tuesday at 6, Wednesday at 10, Thursday at 3. That Darren Pamela Ferdin. Um, oh, no, not another Burgess Meredith show. Um, show that shows fresh culture of the 50s. No, 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 no. <laughs> no, it's the show that gets into popular culture. That's popular, right. Not this trash culture, <laughs> popular culture. And it's anybody, that, of popular anybody culture. that makes a comment like we're about, talking about trash culture of the 50s obviously hasn't watched the show. That's right. So, <laughs> get your facts straight. That's right. I'm Mark Schmidbauer. And I'm Wilbert Neal. And tonight we're going to talk more about Marvel Comics. Yes, I this is... I bet you're saying, hey, I thought this was going to be uh, one of the TV deals, one of the TV shows. Well, Marty was kind of under the weather, and uh, so he decided, well, we'll get the regular schedule back to normal real soon, believe me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> any, any sure we now. will. <laughs> real soon. <laughs> So, uh, let's see. Uh, well, before we get into the big extravaganza, I want to tell you that we're on Tuesdays at 6. Wednesdays at 10. And Thursdays at 3 p.m. here on ACTV, ACTV Cable 21. 21. And also, if you want to write into, into us and, and uh, uh, maybe you want to refute some more lies that were told in that, uh, in that rag. <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah, right. That's right. You want to write into Box 15, 14, 11. Columbus, Ohio. 43215. That's right. When speaking, <laughs> I want I don't want to say the name of it because the, the name of the publication because I don't want to publicize it. That's right. The truth. A certain periodical <laughs> in this in the this fair city yes. uh, did a story on ACTV as a whole, and let's see, uh, they don't really talk too much about our show, but what they did talk about was incorrect. <laughs> uh, they talked about the fact that we talked about the trash culture of the 50s. Yes. And we, as we told you, it's popular culture, 
mostly 60s and 70s. We really don't talk about the 50s all that much. And that's because we just weren't really born yet. I was born in the late late 50s, and then and I um, was and I was born in the in the mid 60s. So yeah, really, Marty was born in the early 60s. So there we are. So really, we have no frame of reference. That's why we <coughs> mostly don't talk about the 50s. We just have nothing to say at that point. <laughs> and uh, there was another there was another thing they said in there. Oh yeah, about uh, series. Uh, or about uh, the fact that you had to pay to use this station. This is a little pl plug for ACTV. <coughs> actually, if you do a series on ACTV, you don't actually have to pay. <laughs> you don't pay for studio time. Let me make that very clear. You, uh, basically, you just have to pay for the tapes. That's right. Which is why you too should work, or not work, actually just come out here and do a show here on ACTV. <laughs> it's the public channel. That's Anybody right. Anybody can do it. That's right. Even us. So That's right. <laughs> And so that we just wanted to get that off our chest. And there was another thing. Uh, yeah, by golly, <laughs> another thing here. We're getting a lot of publicity. Unfortunately, it's all negative. <laughs> it seems that somebody called the station and complained that I was acting drunk on one of the uh, episodes on the 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 um, Columbus, the forgotten Columbus episode. Right. Well, by golly, anybody that knows me knows good and well that I don't drink. As far as Acting drunk, though, now, I act crazy sometimes, but acting drunk, I just wouldn't know how to do that. Perhaps the person that called might know a little bit more about that than me. That's right. <laughs> and, um, but, see, now, acting, though, is if I was acting drunk, then that's just a credit to my acting ability yes. to do something that I don't even know about. So, Correct. thank you for recognizing my acting ability. Yes. Now, <laughs> on with tonight's thing. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Enough with the heaped on abuse. Let's move <laughs> on to the actual program. Okay. And let's see. So we're doing uh, our third show on Marvel Comics. Yeah. Let's see, we've done we've done the humans. We did humans. We did the aliens. We did aliens much. and uh, all kinds of things there last time. Bad guys. Um, <laughs> Now anybody that wasn't basically human, and and now we're going into the the really the mainstay of uh, as far as I'm concerned, the what Marvel has universe. become pretty much the mainstay <laughs> right. of the Marvel universe. We're going to be talking mutants today. Mutants, <laughs> mutants, mutants, mutants. <laughs> mutants and more mutants. That's right. <laughs> basically, Lots um, of mutants. <laughs> the whole mutant thing probably started with the X Men. Yes, the X Men back when they first started in the early '60s after they um. After Marvel got, oh, well, they got the Fantastic Four out there, and pretty much um, a lot of their, well, their current main characters that are still around now, they, they started with this X-Men thing. And basically, what you have here were um, five teenagers who went to Charles Xavier's school for exceptional persons. <laughs> Now that's that's not exactly what it is, Something but um, like that. <laughs> it's basically the school in upstate New York that um, Charles. Well, let me see if I can get a good picture of Dr. Charles Xavier here for you. It's Charles Xavier is this uh, bald-headed guy in a wheelchair, mm -hmm. and um, <laughs> his main thing is well, let's see. Here's like here's, a here's a good nice group shot. <laughs> nice group shot here. I don't I don't know how nice it'll show up, but. It's a nice group shot. <laughs> and, uh, and Charles Xavier is the guy here in the middle in the wheelchair. So um, he um, gets together these exceptional youth, and by exceptional, he has the ability to um, detect mutants, which is basically what these X Men are. The X being the um, this X gene that they have in their right. makeup that. Um, yeah gives them their mutant abilities. Now, I have a question. Now, I, okay. now I'll, I'll say this right in. I've said this thing before when we've been doing Marvel Comics. I don't read a lot of Marvel Comics, <laughs> which is why Wilbur does a lot of the talking during these episodes. <laughs> I'm kind of playing kind of like the person who comes in and doesn't know a lot. So I'm going to ask you this. Um, is there is there a reason that like if, have all these people like gotten near radiation or what's the reason why? I mean, is is it just like stress brings out this is this X gene, or they've, have they ever explained why there are just so many darn mutants in the Marvel Universe? A good question. Yeah. <laughs> Let's find out, shall we? Okay. Basically, I'm looking at it as being something that um, might have had, might it could have had some drawbacks to um, oh I don't know um, atomic testing or things like that, but it might have affected the parents, and so. When they had the offspring, the offspring had this extra gene in there, right? Which, which develops into a mutant ability. 
and it may have something to do with radiation. They never really went back and said exactly what it is, but that's kind of my feeling just from the time that the things were written, that they started off. Okay. I mean, they're still going on now, but it's just the idea of the first ones, you know, that um, there might have been something to do with radiation in there. Now, there's probably some expert out there on Marvel Comics right now that's watching right. this, and they're going to they're gonna write us a letter and say, no, 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 no you got the whole thing wrong. But anyway, that's, that's kind of my theory, just based on the the time that okay. they started off here. Anyway, and as I guess I've said before, um, the mutant ability is something that these people were born with. And then as they get older, it kind of comes to the fore, kind of like um, if you have an allergy, you're pretty much born with it. But as you get older, it makes Kicks itself it. known, right? And so that's pretty much how these mutant abilities do. As they go, grow older, it develops, and then it finally hits one point where it finally kicks in, and so on. That's it. But basically, they started off with um, five students that came to the school. There was um, Scott Summers, who, as well, anybody that knows the mutants know, is Cyclops. He has the ability to shoot eye beams out through his eyes. There's eye no way there. you're going to see this on the did you uh, playing along at home. But uh, Probably not. <laughs> anyway, Scott Summers <laughs> take shoots. A, take a, <laughs> take it from us. There's eye beams coming out of here. Okay? He shoots eye beams. Eye beams. High beam, eye beams. Anyway. There you go. Anyways. And he's um, pretty much the um, the team leader of the X. Oh, there. Oh, that's a nice one. Yeah, there you go. Okay. He's kind of the team leader off and on of right. the X Men, right. at least of the early early X Men, the early incarnation of the X Men. There's Scott Summers, there was um, Hank, oh, well, well, let's just call him Hank, because I can't remember <laughs> what Hank's last name is. Hank. And he became known as the Beast, <clears throat> kind of because of the, well, his mutant ability is the that he can cling to things, and he's very athletic, and he can just, like, claw, crawl up a wall, almost like, like Spider-Man. Spider -Man. Yet... He really uses um, the cracks that are in the wall, but any wall has enough cracks in it that he can okay. <clears throat> gain a hold okay. on. And then he's very athletic, and he can flip around and stuff. He was a gymnast, really, in school. And um, so that's that. <clears throat> there is um, Warren, Warren, well, Warren Worthington III or something like that. <laughs> and he's Angel. He's called Angel. He has these wings on his back that... Come, pop out and he can fly around. Let's see. Go back to this picture here again. Love, well, there's there's like a a nice picture there. It kind of shows his wings. Of course, we're real far away, so I don't think you'll see him as well. But here's <laughs> move him even closer. Okay, here here's Mr. Warren Worthington the third there. And um, now, wasn't there another? I'm thinking there was another character called the Angel, <laughs> um, like back in the '40s. I'm trying to find a reference to him, but uh, it is quite possible. There, that is quite possible. <laughs> and he was well. He looks kind of like a snowman down here, really. But he's Ice Man, and so he's known now. He can. Um, there we go. Lower his body temperature immensely. There we have the an angel, and he was a 40s character uh -huh. from Timely, which became Marvel. So I'm guessing okay, that, that they might be some, there may well even be some sort of connection between this guy. Yeah, that's quite possible. <laughs> they probably rehashed the name, you know, and like you say, it could be something. It could be right. like a grandfather or something like there that. There you go. Okay, but Iceman, he can lower his body temperature and actually hurl snowballs or ice balls or something like that. He can create ice flows that he can travel on. He can skate around and things freeze the ground around him and really kind of a formidable guy just don't get him around heat <laughs> yeah <laughs> and um that's a problem <clears throat> then there's jean marvel girl and her ability she has um telekinetic abilities and she can also read minds and things like that but which, um which pretty much if you were a female superhero back then you had to have some sort of telepathic powers because you didn't see the girls going out and punching out guys, right. punching out supervillains. You just didn't see it. I mean, nobody did that then. <laughs> exactly. Sue Sue Richards had she her. She turned um, invisible. She turned invisible, and she could create force fields. Right. And um, but it was basically defensive type powers. Yes. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> and Jean can. Um, well, she has these telekinetic abilities, and she can also read minds. It's like, 
she and Charles Xavier, um, well, Charles can just read everybody's mind. He has just the greatest brain in the world. <laughs> That's his mutant ability, a great brain ability. And um, then he has this computer that helps him to detect mutants, but before he was kind of doing it himself, and then he can telepathically send messages, X-Men, I need you, or something. There's danger, hurry. And anyway, so um, back in the days, he kind of had a thing for Gene, but as time goes on, Gene and, and uh, Scott got together, and they're pretty much a, a, a main couple in the, the X-World, the X-Universe there. Okay. And, well, it got to one point where, let's see, hmm, let's delve here. A little delving. <laughs> into history. Pull out the history of the, the official handbook of the Marvel Universe. The, this is the third <laughs> of the official handbooks. The first being a paperback, the second one being all in comic book form. This one is loose leaf notebook form. Now, now this is something I want to mention just in the format of this. Now, this is not at all a, a cut on Marvel because both DC and Marvel do this all the time. Yes. But I think, I'm, I'm <coughs> think that DC did the loose leaf who's who type thing just before Marvel did this. Yes. It's like <laughs> they, it's like they, they they feed off each other all the time. Right. Somebody <laughs> somebody came up with the idea and the other one said, "Ooh, that's, hey, that's a good, good idea. Let's do it too." So let's do it too. But who who thought up the thing first? Right. We don't know, but Marvel DC did, did get... Marvel did Punisher, <laughs> DC did Lobo. Yeah. <laughs> I mean... And, and when we'll, we'll compare and contrast these right. characters as, as we go on, but... Okay, the first makeup was pretty much um, the five, as I'd mentioned. Right. Ooh, this is glossy, so I don't yeah. know if that's good. The gonna... odds of this really picking up. I, oh, oh, that's, that's that good. Up, okay, okay. <laughs> that, that does real good. And there's Mr. Great Brain himself right up here. And down here we have Mimic who kind of showed up one time, and he had everybody's powers, all in one guy. And, but I think he, he died or something. Yeah. <laughs> Too useful, let's get rid of him. <clears throat> and so, um, let's see here. Then we had... Uh, <laughs> There's several others who kind of show up, and... Well, let's see, as time went on, they got more characters. Um, Havoc, who can use sound waves to create earthquakes. Lorna Dane, well, I just don't know what she did. <laughs> Let's find out here. Lorna Dane. Mm -hmm. Don't know. Okay. <laughs> Changeling. Now, Changeling is an interesting one. He can take on the form of anybody else, which is, which is kind of useful. Does he get the powers? Um, no. No, he just, just tricks people into thinking they're them. Yeah, James, he was a former adversary of the X-Men, actually, ah. and... Um, he discovered he was dying of cancer. He shot the reform, and so um, he goes through all this stuff. And well, actually, he did finally die. But anyway, so <clears throat> that was kind of their second lineup. They just got in these new characters. Their third lineup. Well, let's see. We in we're introduced to Colossus, who is like a he's a Russian guy. Peter Vladivostok. <laughs> anyway, oh, he's so powerful, he just throws those dumbbells. Or, or he can just do a really good Marlon Brando. Stella! Stella! <laughs> All right, let's find out more about this Colossus guy. <laughs> Peter Nikolaevich Rasputin. Yes, that's him. Anyway, he, um, his mutant ability is to become um, a metal guy at will. He can oh. just... <laughs> <laughs> get a body of metal, so, um, and he's pretty strong, too. <laughs> and he gets even stronger when he gets that metal body. And let's see, there, well, Havoc is still around. Havoc is actually, um, Alexander Summers, and that makes him Scott Summers' little brother. Oh. And so that's, that's interesting. And, well, let's see here, um, Nightcrawler. Oh, no, there's, there's an interesting character. Kurt Wagner, <laughs> who is, um... Well, German-born, he was the first recruit into the new team of X-Men. And, well, there's a whole story behind that, too. They had to go and rescue the original X-Men from this living island. <clears throat> and that was, that's a, that was quite a story there. <laughs> See, Banshee, Sean Cassidy, not related to David. <laughs> or, or the other Sean Cassidy. Or the other Sean Cassidy. <laughs> because he just has a... Uh, piercing siren call that he does, and by golly, let's see, that's that's 
That's what he does. <laughs> Banshee's his name. <laughs> and as we know, a banshee is a wailing kind of deal. Symbol of death or something right. for the Irish. <laughs> okay, Sunfire, who was a Japanese guy, probably kind of related almost directly to the um, dropping of the bomb on Hiroshima. Yeah, yep. just dumb. Yep. <clears throat> Got his powers there. And I, I, must, I must say, from what I've heard so far, that X Men certainly seem to have done, or Marvel's done a much better job of, of uh, bringing uh, foreign characters in than, because uh, Justice League and and all the stuff over at DC has just recently started to bring in foreign heroes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, they actually they actually created a group called the Global Guardians, which was basically just like, well, heroes we've mentioned like once, <laughs> ever, who happen to be from another <laughs> country. We'll put them all in there. <laughs> That's right. And that's where they'll be. Yeah. Okay. You never hear about them. <clears throat> but the, the, that was like a second, well, a third actual lineup of X-Men there included all those guys. Let's let's just go back and recap. Oh, another there. one? Okay. Yeah, there's Sunfire and Thunderbird, who was a Native American um, um, mutant. Right. Well, something happened and he died. <clears throat> but <laughs> he's got a brother complete history. who came on later. <laughs> Excuse me. Okay, there was one point where Warren Worthington the third, also known as um, Angel, actually left the group, and um, he went on to because he had all this money that he inherited. He just went away and went Hung on out. to do his do his fortune thing. Right. Be a, be just a a, a rich guy, <laughs> but. He ran afoul of a bad guy who we'll just mention later here. Nightcrawler also. Let me let me go back to him. His his not only he looks he looks evil. He has the ability to teleport, and when he does teleport, it leaves this nasty um, sulfur smell. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yes. Oh yikes! <laughs> and it makes a sound like bam. That's, that's the sound that it makes. Bam. You can just bam all over the place. Then. That's what a what a bizarre power! <laughs> here's here's kind of a picture of Nightcrawler bamfing up here in the corner, <laughs> <laughs> doing some bamfing. <laughs> yes, bamfing with the best of him. There he is, right there, in his little bamf cloud behind him. <laughs> amazing. Uh, and then there's the amazing Rogue, who has, who is pretty much pound for pound, probably one of the strongest of the X-Men, at least as far as things go. She can fly, and what she does is she can take, if she touches any being, she takes their power from them, whether they have power or not. If it's just a regular human, she just takes their energy away, and they just kind of fall asleep or fall into a coma <laughs> or something. But if it's somebody with a mutant power, she can take their mutant power and make it her own for a while. Which is kind of neat, and it kind of renders them helpless for a while. Which is kind of neat. It's kind of a nice power to have. And then, well, let's see, there's Sprite, who joined the X-Men, kind of came in and joined up with them. Um, she now has the name Shadowcat, and she's in um, Excalibur, which is a an English mutant group. But we'll get into that <laughs> later. A British mutant group. Excuse me, not just English, but British. Right. Oh, and of course, there's Storm. Let's see, has Storm come in here? Yeah, yep, Storm. Yep, Storm. Um, what is, well, let me get her real name. Aurora Prince, no. Let's see, Storm is not on there. That's odd. Well, let's go back to the last one. Storm, okay. Aurora Monroe. And she's from Africa. Mm -hmm. And she, well, she was born in Africa. Well, she's born in the United States, excuse me, grew up in Africa, and was kind of an orphan. She was, she was an orphan. She kind of hung out on the streets and learned to take care of herself on the streets. Um, she can pick any lock in the world, and she's really kind of a formidable thief. And her one great weakness, well, her mutant power is the ability to control weather and create weather, actually. And she was kind of revered once she found her power as a god, kind of, by um, some tribal groups in Africa. but um, And they found her, Charles Xavier found her, brought her to the United States. She has one weakness, though. It's, it's rare that you'll really find a weakness that is um, mentioned, even. She is claustrophobic, 
very, very badly claustrophobic. If she's in a closed in space, she just goes crazy. Mm. So <clears throat> that's Storm. And she's also, um, she became a leader of the X-Men for a while when Scott left to do some, pursue other things. She became a, a part-time leader okay. of the X-Men. All right. <laughs> Let's move along here. Um, okay. Let's see. Well, by golly, <coughs> at one point, old Charles Xavier miraculously got out of his wheelchair and he kind of became a, a team leader there for a while, too, which Storm kind of, well, she kind of didn't like the idea, but, well, she was happy that her former mentor was out and about, about. and everything, <laughs> so she just kind of put up with it. And Magneto, well... We haven't mentioned any of the bad guys yet. I suppose we should. If nobody else, at least Magneto. Magneto is the master of magnetism. <laughs> he is a bad guy. And, and he's he looks got like that. Right here. <laughs> By golly, if they ever did him, I guess Leslie Nielsen <laughs> or somebody could play Magneto. <laughs> anyway, he's kind of a contemporary of Xavier's, Charles Xavier's, except... Charles Xavier, what, basically what he wants to do is he wants mutants to be able to exist alongside normal humans peacefully. <laughs> Can't we all just get along? Exactly. <laughs> Where Magneto thinks, well, we're better, we're stronger, we should rule. Ah. <laughs> yes, indeed. <laughs> That's what he says to the guys that don't like him. <laughs> Yikes. <laughs> anyway, um, Magneto was pretty much the first bad guy that the, um, the X-Men ever came across. And since then, they've been crossing paths. And at one point, he reformed enough to think that Charles might be right. So he joined up with the X-Men to help them in their quest for getting along with humans. But along with that, people always say, well, wait a minute, you're Magneto. You're a bad guy. So those X-Men must be bad guys, too. And so they started thinking of the X-Men as outlaws. And that just started a whole big mess to do and mess <laughs> and everything. But um, for a while there, Magneto was actually considered a good guy. And he was kind of a leader of the X-Men at a point. Okay. Now, moving right along here, we've got, um, well, a couple more joining in here. Psylocke, who has the ability to probe and sometimes destroy the minds of others. Well, at this point, she was just simply able to probe their minds. Here she is right over here. And over here, we have Dazzler, who is, um, has the ability to transform light into power. And she can also create amazing light shows, which is something that a lot of mutants since then have also the ability to do, to transform light or sound. Well, she transforms sound into light, I guess that's what it is. And so um, she can use that to blind or to amaze because for a while there, Dazzler was, um, she kind of came in in the mid-70s because they kind of did disco shows around Dazzler and she became a <laughs> star in her own right. She was a, she was a performer at that point. She yeah, was yeah. a singer and all and she did her own light show. So it was really probably um, good for her. I mean, easy for her to do and people were just amazed and mm -hmm. she didn't have to pay anybody. So. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's kind of her view. And then, okay, down here, we have another guy, Longshot, who's, uh, who comes from another dimension, and it's kind of wow. kind of strange, really. He's from a dimension where um, TV is reality, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> wow. And so... Um, kind of like this show. <laughs> it's, it's just kind of an odd thing. Let's, let's see if they... Nope, not at all. They don't. They don't. They don't go into that a bit. Let's see here. Okay, he's an artificial created humanoid from another dimension. Er, Longshot is one of the few X-Men who was not Earthborn, an Earthborn mutant. He joined the team upon arriving there in an amnesiac state. And let's see, he teamed with the X-Men in overthrowing the rule of Mojo in his native dimension. And as they go on with the stories, you find out that it's a dimension, and Mojo um, kind of creates shows and creates androids to be in the shows, but the androids are kind of sentient beings after a while. Hmm. And they don't 
like being controlled, and so they always try to escape, and sometimes they do get out, and other times they don't. Okay. Let's see here. Who do we have left? Well, okay. I know, I know one we have left. <laughs> At least one, okay. Um, Wolverine, let's say, he's, he's gone through many changes in his time. Um, when he first appeared, he Looks was like fighting the Hulk, and he was... Kind of like this guy. <laughs> yeah, well, well it's nope. actually kind of like this one. This guy. <laughs> The many costumes of Wolverine. The many faces of Wolverine. <laughs> and um, he was just kind of, he was up there in the Canadian outback. Wolverine is Canadian, or at least... Lots of them. <laughs> he's just done that. And um, Wolverine, um, his name is Logan. That's the only name that we know him by. <laughs> by golly. You mean we're done already? You're oh kidding. My gosh. We haven't even Hard to believe. touched on the surface here. We're going to have to actually <coughs> go on to another one. Oh, another, my golly. Another Marvel show. I guess we will. Okay, well, <laughs> I guess we'll have to get into Wolverine's we'll Wolverine amazing and, and the rest history later. later. Yeah. Gee. Uh, next time, we're going to be talking with the, with the all three of us talking about the history of cable television. Yeah, at least as far as we know now. As far as we know, but do. who knows what will be on next time. It, it, it could end up just being another one of those Columbus things. Yeah. <laughs> Oh. Acting drunk or something. Yeah. Well, <laughs> for all of us here at Bass Wasteland, we'll see you next time. Good on, everybody! Good on! Good evening, and welcome to another exciting episode of Bass Wasteland.